this again. Wait, what are we doing? Yo, you know. No. Podcast. Wait a minute. You hear that? Podcast. What is it? I don't know. It's like it's getting closer. What the, what the fuck is that? That's right, Rotten Mornings Podcast is coming back at you for Season 11. The same old blah blah bullshit you've always expected from us. Remember, Rotten Mornings Podcast. (laughs) Season 11. I forgot that part. Uh, hello guys and welcome to this episode of Rotten Mornings. I'm your uh, third host. Fuck uh, pig. I'm your fuck pig. <laughs> he's he's oh the fuck pig. my. <laughs> <laughs> fuck pig Matt. No, 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 no. Hi, I'm fuck pig. That's all you say. Hi, I'm fuck pig. That's all I say. Oh. Oink, 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 oink. Oink, oink, oink. No. <laughs> oh, get in this, get in this uh. mic. Get in the mic and say it. Oink, oink. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, I'm Matt. I'm Grim. I'm traumatized. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Carrie, the traumatized one. All Aww. right, guys, and welcome to another episode of Rotten Oink, 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 oink. Episode 16, I believe we are on. <laughs> I think that's right. Oink. Um, 16? That's 15 plus 1. It is. It is. <clears throat> so, as we normally do, we will be starting off with a recap of Except our week. Except with this recap, we're starting it off with Tommy Rotten. Yay. That's right. Tommy, we miss you, Tommy. Tommy Come Rotten uh, made a post, and he went out to Days of the Dead in Indianapolis. Uh, he, he's he got a lot of pictures up. You guys oh, go check so out Tommy, R-O-T-N. Uh, he met up with our friend Harsho Jack up there. Yes. So. Uh, saw a lot of cool people that were up there. Badass costumes. And you were being a little sneaky shit, and it played <coughs> out in such good favor. You were like, okay, I'm going to go to this post and tag the other, yep. go to this one and tag yep. the other one, <laughs> so they can meet up Gotta so get it the working. same place. <laughs> Yay! And he also got to visit uh, Necropolis Underground Haunted Attraction, and he had a lot of really good things to say about it including this uh i've always said i'd love to see liminal space utilized in a haunt Mm -hmm. and he said that there was a haunt there that specifically did a liminal space area liminal liminal (laughs) a liminal space area and i would love to see that in a haunt because i I think liminal space is just it's so ominous it's that it's that thing you get in a haunt where the most i've ever seen it utilized (coughs) is almost accidental Say you go to a haunt and they don't have a lot of actors. So they got a whole ton of actors in their main scenes and their main scenes are at the front of the haunt. Then you got another ton of the actors at the very back of the haunt in the exiting scenes. But because they're low on actors, the middle, they don't have people for the scenes. So you go through and you get this intense like bang, bang, bang experience (laughs) and then nothing you're literally walking I mean, through really, sets. I mean, really, what's better than a bang, bang, bang experience? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I mean, that's a triple bang. A banger. <laughs> oh, my God. A triple banger. You understand what I'm Bigger. saying. It's oh, like, yes, I like that. I fucking hate you guys so I much. I need you to All go right. show me how that works. Moving right along. <laughs> God damn it. Bangers. <laughs> <sighs> it's going to be one of those episodes Shut up, I'm fuck picking pig. up. <laughs> this is one of those episodes. One of those episodes. All right. So we what else do we have? Pig. So big shout out to uh, Days of the Dead. Big shout out to Harsho Jack. Big shout out, of course, to Tommy Rotten. And uh, thank you for giving him a great experience. Uh, Necropolis Underground. Did he get a bang, Yay. bang, bang? He, I'm sure he got a bang, bang, bang. Did he bang. become a banger? He also <laughs> told me. He's probably going to do this, <gasps> that he has actually put his name in for the costume contest at CreepyCon. <gasps> yes! Oh, my God, yes! So oh, he's oh definitely God. coming with us oh, to yeah. CreepyCon. All right, well, you know we're going to be in the crowd screaming our heads off over Tommy. Yes. Somebody's going to have to watch the, watch the booth while we are <laughs> Somebody's screaming. Somebody's going to go, friend! 
That's our brother up there. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So yeah. we need to go find a hooker and get him <coughs> to watch our booth <coughs> while we're doing stuff. And we need to walk around and be like, remember to cheer. Did you just say a hooker? <laughs> Don't judge me. We, we need to walk around the I crowd sure and, 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 right. and like <laughs> campaign for him in the costume contest. Be like, be sure to cheer really loud for Tommy Rotten in the costume contest. And we'll, we'll look at everybody in the audience. And one random person that's chilling really loud will win this rotten prize package. We're buying fucking votes. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. I'll do anything for Tommy. Buying votes for Tommy. <laughs> oh, no. for Tommy. Hookers wait, for Tommy! Wait, yeah. I don't think we can say that. Then they'll know. Oh, never mind. Strike that from the record. But that we is can not still happening. Have but if you Tommy. vote for Tommy, <laughs> you can see my tits. Yeah. Yeah. Anyhow, um, so, so yeah. Matt decided to take us out on a little date, and we got to play some video games. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, we played Halo. We did. That was awesome, man. I put that video Halo. up on and YouTube. And we shot stuff. And we shot stuff. Yay. <laughs> yeah. And then they were mad because I made them leave. Yep. Yeah, I didn't want to leave. Yeah, I didn't want to leave either. <laughs> I just fail people. <laughs> and another one Failure. about uh, always. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> another one about Tommy. So yeah, Tommy's Tommy, always creating some of the greatest things. He is. He made a uh, human skin lamp, lamp cover, a lampshade that is bad as fuck. And oh he, my fucking god. He rigged god, it up yes. with these like uh, extremely ratchet fucking uh, power surger shit. So it it looks bad as fuck. It's I've amazing. never seen anything that nice. I love it very much. Very badass. And then there is something called. Yes, uh, so uh, Screamville Haunted Attraction has now started doing a thing called uh, Camp Getaway, and it's an escape experience from the creators of Screamville. It's a vacation to die for. And it says, attention campers coming this fall to Screamville Haunted Attraction. Welcome to Camp Getaway, the ultimate horror-themed escape experience. Immerse yourself in a chilling adventure where every corner holds secrets, mysteries, and heart-pounding surprises. Survive the nightmare. Can you outsmart the deranged killer lurking in the campgrounds? Solve mind-bending puzzles, decode cryptic clues, and stay one step ahead of the clutches of terror. Uncover stir- uh, pfft, pfft. I was get, I was doing so fucking good. Not really, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, if you want a camping experience haunt that is now going, go check out Screamville Haunted Attraction on Facebook. Uh, they have Doug out there is a fucking badass. Uh, those fuckers, they are so goddamn creative. They have some of the best people working out there. So this is a de- this is something I personally have not done that kind of a thing before so i would actually be interested in checking that out sometime because i bet it is a hoot yes that would be fun and city of chaos is promoting their combat park for this year that's right guys Yay. combat park always open you want to go and get a little taste of the chaos from the city of chaos go to combat park they have drive paintball, a tank. airsoft you can drive a tank everything they do goes to supporting veterans uh, a really great business. Uh, you know, they have like flea markets out there sometimes. They have and the flea markets have shows. really cool escape stuff. Rooms. Escape yeah. rooms. Yes, great they, stuff I mean, for they, good prices. They, everything you can do. It is a all around family experience, especially if you like guns. Yes, and CreepyCon is fast approaching. That's right, guys, and we just finally I'm hit so our mark on raising the funds. We have raised the money in order to get our booth, so it is completely confirmed by tomorrow when I send the payment. We will have a 20 by 20 booth at CreepyCon that will be dedicated to Woo! Rotten, City of Chaos, Hellbilly Hollow, and the Haunted Chicken House. Yes. We will also be doing... If your costume gets broken, we will be doing quick fixes on costume Mm -hmm. and quick fixes on makeup as well. One of the offers that we will have if anybody has a mess up. Now, we're not going to like completely make a cosplay for you. We're not going to completely do makeup for you. But if something happens to your costume, we always thought like great uh, cons. They always have a booth to help people like fix up their cosplay. And Tommy's going to be our like fabricator fixer guy. And I'll Grim ha- and Carrie will help with touch-ups on anybody's and makeup that goes makeup. bad and I'll, fabrication. I'll stitch things and I'll bring Velcro and whatever else. Yes. So that's something we're going to try out. Um, of course, we'll always have the rotten experience that you have come to love, which is chaos and unadulterated ridiculousness. Um, mm-hmm. 
We will also bring a TV and a laptop with us, and we will be showing commercials at our booth this year, so you can mm-hmm. actually come and see some of the stuff that we do. Yay! What if we get a projector? We could get a projector, or I've got that really nice computer screen right there. Oh, true. Man. Yes. Okay, that's exciting. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm very much excited. It's awesome. And we've got a class that we'll be teaching up there Saturday at between 4 and 5 o'clock. That I we believe. have yet to put together, but that it's going to happen. That we haven't to put together, but it, you know it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Because if the quality of this podcast tells you anything, it's that we can literally <laughs> cut a mic on and just kill it. Yeah. Like a motherfucker, because that's how we do this. Listen to Fuck Pig. (laughs) (laughs) Oink. No, stop it. (laughs) So we did a live with ice cream brulee. I sound like I said brulee. Brulee. Whatever. R- and uh, I almost died. Yeah, Grim almost died. Oh, yeah, that hot gummy bear. Uh, so please, Carrie, it was your idea. Yes, the ice please cream describe your idea that you had. Belongs to Carrie. <laughs> so we tried a few different ice cream flavors and some crazy toppings. We did it by putting the pieces of paper with the ice cream names in one cup and the pieces of paper with the toppings on them. In another cup. And then we closed our eyes and we pulled out one of each. And sometimes we got good combos. But a lot of the times we got really nasty ones. And it really happened the most to Grim. Yes. <laughs> she got, and what, uh, green tea and bacon bits and it, then green tea and these salad were not toppings. Fun surprises. <laughs> Listen, that salad I, topping was no joke now. That salad topping was no joke. No. <laughs> we had like, sa- and one of them was like so cold bad. soup. <laughs> and, uh, I'm pretty sure that the cold soup got pulled out and destroyed the very first time I ate the soup. I'm pretty sure that y'all both pulled it out and got rid of it so it wouldn't be on the card anymore. I don't recall this. I don't remember. Because it never got pulled again, and when we went back through it in the end, we pulled all the things, and it was not in there. (laughs) Go back and watch. Sneaky little fuckers. (laughs) But yeah, Grim uh, Grim was wrecked the next day. She is lactose intolerant. Yes, and very severely. And it put me in a very foul mood, honestly. I was ready to kill everybody. But we also had the world's hottest gummy bear. That was also a challenge and a half brought to you by Scott Newton, a friend of ours that hangs yes. at the store. Uh, he got us the world hottest gummy, gummy bear. Okay, we've done it. It's done. Don't anybody suggest us do crap like that again. That was Let me go hell. ahead and state. I will never do another live involving ice cream with me. I'll, Put it in I'll the never books. do that. No in the more. Books. And with very spicy things, I'm probably not going to do that either. I don't There's know. There's still a little wiggle room there. Maybe, but none with ice cream. A little bit. Wi- no freaking ice cream. And milk, dairy product stuff. Like, I'm just not doing it. Not not like that. Never, no. Never, no. Nope. <laughs> never, never mind. I almost but, died, guys. But listen, never the live know. was great. They kept getting up and getting naked. Uh, it was very off putting. Uh, pudding. I don't like pudding. This should have been pudding. Nope. No! Pudding. Nope. No pudding. Y'all don't like pudding? Nope. Oh my god. I love me some pudding. I'm gonna shut the fuck up. Pig. If, any, if anybody gets, gets my, <laughs> fuck my, pig. my Barry and LaVon yeah. reference. Okay, so what's next? I wasn't paying attention. Yay. <laughs> next is, oh, you guys did an AI Live. We did. We uh, did a live. I was live. not there for that. We did a live on TikTok where we uh, put in usernames and different words and produce images. It was it was fucking fun. We did have a lot of viewers, so we might have to work on how we do it, I guess, somehow. But it was it was fun. I think that if we did it through Steam Labs as a a screen projector and we had us on camera, I think that would work really well. So that's something we might do in the future is a live where we sit here and, and make AI and, and make fun of people and say how the AI is making fun of them. Yay! <laughs> I think it'd be fun. Um, yeah, that's the thing. Grim was in a bad mood that day, though. She didn't want to that be That was this. after all of the fucking shit. I was still suffering from that's the ice cream and shit. Were, that, was your, that was Saturday, which the ice it cream... It gave me such bad gas pains, too, and all I could do was hate you. <laughs> what? That was Carrie's fucking idea. You enforced it. I didn't enforce. Oh, okay. Easy now. We uh, we don't want that image going out there. <laughs> I was forced to do that, or he threatened to kill my bird. <laughs> 
This wow. is our testimonies. Yep. We're survivors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is more photos that I'm very proud to show off of our Tommy. Yes, Tommy so posted So pay attention, up. guys. These uh, photos are nice. Yeah, go on there uh, on Rot Reviews or go find Tommy and check out his photos from Days of the Dead in Indianapolis. And Matt was feeling bad <laughs> that he had fucked up, you know, our weekend, and he took us out to eat. We ate some Mexican food at yeah. La Pinata Mexican Grill. Yes, and we uh, actually there was a guy there it playing was so music, good. and when we first walked in, he played a Beatles song. Then he played a couple other songs. And he went back to the Beatles and he played three songs from Rubber Soul that were um, like my favorite songs from that album, and his name is. I'm going to let Graham try to perfect. CJ Sayanatra. Sayanatra. Sayanandran. Sayanandra. Sayanandran. CJ Sayanandra. We made a post with it. Go we made it. a post. It's up there. Yeah. Sayandra, I think. Sayan, 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 I, I couldn't really pronounce it myself either. I don't Sorry, know. we're butchering names, people. This is Sorry, what we guys. do. Sorry, guys. But yeah, it was really cool. You guys should go check out Pinata. It's out in Chelsea, Childersburg, Childersburg Alabama. Uh, and, uh, yeah, super and cool. And they, ha- honestly, that is probably some of the greatest food I had at a Mexican restaurant ever. Yeah, you did. Like, you had two full plates in front of you, too. I didn't eat at all, but still, I tried. <laughs> I, I didn't know they were going to bring me so much food. There's I was like, I'll have these food. tacos and this one thing. And then it was like, okay, why'd you bring me the whole bar? <laughs> <laughs> So that was awesome. That was really cool. The music was phenomenal. Hanging out there was super, super cool. And And then, of course, today we went out to City of Chaos for their round two of interviewing. Yes. Uh, And just really cool seeing all the people, especially the new people. I love meeting new people that are getting into the haunt business. Absolutely. Makes me so happy. Seems like a lot of really, like, just in it people Mm -hmm. that are ready to go. Uh, I cannot wait to see what they bring to the table and seeing what City of Chaos Y'all walked past before Shane moved the tarp, but he had a really cool prop. I think he showed it to you on his phone. The wheel. No, he was showing me bugs that he took pictures of. Oh. I fucking love bugs, so he's taking pictures of bugs and showing me. I thought he was showing your prop. (laughs) Well, he he had a really cool prop. I don't want to give anything away, but uh, afterwards I'll tell you what it was. But it it looks phenomenal. Not you, listeners. Not you, (laughs) listeners. You, You listeners will have to go to see. And trust me, it is beautiful. Um, but yeah, oh, and we've got to finish their damn story room. That's, that's, yes. hey, reminder of me was, while listening to this I think he was going to show me something else, and I was like, I don't know, interested he, in another It's so bug. hard for us to, like, Focus listen, on stuff. to anybody who we talk to, we are the ultimate squirrel group. Like, squirrel! We are the worst when it comes to being okay. sidetracked. So, or <laughs> Saturday, we went to go see our dad, Tim, and yes. we were standing there talking, and some the way he put it, I was just like, playing in the dirt i guess or whatever and tim's like look at her she's such a dumbass kid she said he said <laughs> she, you're just like a toddler <laughs> because you were kind of water baby walking around too like your head was down and your hands were like <laughs> that's not true why do you call me a fucking water baby no i'm not a fucking water baby ever say that again fuck you fuck your fucking hat it's not funny no Take it back. <laughs> okay, take it back. Who's the water baby? You're, you're not what? a water baby. You are, though. I'm not a water baby. You're a fucking water baby. Look at your fucking face. Look at your fucking face. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, guys, is there anything else? Shut uh, your goddamn mouth. To be had. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> so, anything else that we've got? Anybody? Carrie, anything else? I can still slap you. <laughs> your punching does it, not hurt it fuels me it fuels me okay guys so uh we'll be right back after this non-break for the uh carrie astro bites <laughs> fuck you fuck you all right guys fuck y'all, you! stay rotten <laughs> i'm gonna kill you say stay rotten <laughs> I'm going to fucking end you. You're the fucking water baby face, Turn bitch. Turn the fucking mic off! off! I'm going to fucking kill you. Oh my... Have you ever wished to hear your horoscope and the Rotten Mornings podcast at the same time? Now you can. Welcome to Carrie's Astro Bites. Oh! No, I'm just kidding. I'm not ready. I'm just... 
<laughs> You're at, all right, guys. Hey, and welcome to Matt's Troll. No, this is what we're not gonna fucking start. This is not Matt's Troll Bites. I don't know. <laughs> Who the fuck? Bites. No, listen. Who the fuck started this shit? Whoever did needs to stop. And I you think it was it. you. No, you. You, start. you, you started, started it. You started it. No. Like, and then you were like, back. what? Okay, all right. Back. Insert it now. But. Hi, I'm Hi, Matt. <laughs> Matt. Oh, I'm Matt. I'm Matt. I'm Matt Strollbot. Stupid fuck. <laughs> All right, back to normal speed now. And guess what? Now that we're in normal speed, it this is Gary. Gary's Astro Bites. Yay. Yay. For the year of 2023, right? No. This is not that year. Oh, okay. <laughs> Welcome to Carrie's Astro Bites for the week of June 26th, 2023. I tricked yeah, you. Catch him, motherfucker. <laughs> oh my god. I've been got. Again, oh. I got you last week, yeah, too. Week. This is now Gotcha Part 3. Oh, really? <laughs> Fuck, yeah, not again. For you guys. The worst goddamn skits. Yay. <laughs> so, uh, now that, you know, the chaos is subsiding a little. Yeah, um, now this is troll ass bites. Uh, no, God, stop a- it. <laughs> no, this <laughs> is not perfect. troll ass bites. This is right. Carrie's Astro Bites. Don't listen to Matt. All right, darn tootin'. So, there's no huge planetary movements this week. Um... Yeah. Uranus. <laughs> Uranus. Uranus is moving. Butthole. <laughs> Surfers. God damn. <laughs> so yeah. No hooch. P- <laughs> <laughs> no hooch. What is happening no right hooch. now? Well, this is going just. I don't even know what's now. going on. There's no huge planetary movements this week. Hooch plooch. I'm gonna say it again. Okay. I've said that like three guys. to four times. Pull the mic off the wall. Quit. <laughs> Get your hand off the mic. All they hear it's is like. Funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I can't help it. I'm hyperventilating over here. Okay, let's let's move on to the astrology. Before. There is something coming up in October. What? A solar eclipse. Yeah. On the fourteenth. Ooh, a solar eclipse in October? Fuck yes. yeah. Where so, are we gonna... you know what we're going to do? We're going to have a solar eclipse party. What day is that? In October? Yep. Yeah. During hot season? Just for us. Oh. Hmm. A party just for us. Like this? Yeah. <laughs> like Tommy's much... invited. Fuck Tommy. <laughs> Tommy's invited. Okay. I'm running away into the woods. <laughs> It's gonna be a magical party. I'm Carrie, and I started the troll ass bites thing. You heard it here, second people. If the I would like to come, leave now. Okay, if you guys want to come uh, and check it out? Just go find the page on Facebook. I and would like to leave join. now. Accept the invite. I would st- <laughs> like to leave now, please. Please take me away here. from here. <laughs> Somebody, on, take me away. it's not a joke anymore. It is a joke. It's not a joke. I need help. All right, so <laughs> Sagittarius. No! That wasn't for Matt. You can't leave your butthole out like that. <laughs> she actually didn't. She wasn't no, out. She takes care of her butthole. Why would you accuse her? Of she she takes never care. Leave it out. The only person that sticks their fingers are my balls. <laughs> Who the fuck is Pete? She said me, not Pete. Oh. <laughs> The only person that sticks their fingers in my butt is Pete. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god! I'm crying right now. This is great. We haven't even gotten to the horse. I told you this is 
Stroll if I fight. find you, Pete, you're fucking dead. You're a fucking dead man, Pete. <laughs> I can smell everybody's I'm fingers and <laughs> Don't. Oh my god, oh god damn god, it. Terry's why are crying. You, crying? you guys Terry, made Terry uh, cry. It was fucking Pete. It was Pete. Pete. <laughs> Pete. It was fucking Pete. Your ass is mine. Everybody with the name Pete, you're under investigation. Yeah, you are fucked. I guarantee you don't have one listener with Pete as a name. Yeah, and Somebody name. call Pete Davidson. <laughs> Fuck Pete Davidson. I think if we do, they better change their fucking name. Yeah, if your name is Pete, just go on and change it to fucking Ted. I'm about to fuck you up. <laughs> I'm about to kill myself. <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, I guess we're going to read your horoscopes now. But we're not going to be reading Pete's fucking horoscope. <laughs> no, Pete. fuck you, Pete. Fuck you, Pete. You don't get one, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. Mm. That's what I thought. Alright, Sagittarius, today is your lucky day. You're not gonna die. No, it's not their turn yet. Aries, avoid making promises to clients that you may find challenging to fulfill. While your confidence and imagination are heightened this week, making significant decisions may prove difficult. Taurus. Taurus. Did you just say Taurus? <laughs> We've been watching the boys, guys, so we're into some, you know, weird shit like super terrorist. Okay. <laughs> like super terrorist. You can say that word. I think we're going to get flagged on Amazon now just because we Damn put that man. Word in there. Oh, shit. Fuck you, Matt. Taurus, strictly avoid arguments and confrontations, as emotional outbursts can cause disharmony at home. There may be a few important purchases for the house towards the weekend. (laughs) Gemini's, you should dissociate from colleagues who are fond of gossiping and spreading rumors. Your top priority should be your work, and you need to stay focused on that. (laughs) Cancers! <laughs> uh, channel your energy towards positive endeavors. Avoid sharing confidential matters with people you cannot trust or those you may think will divulge your secrets. Which one do you think came first, the astrology thing or the disease? Astrology. The stars. So cancer was named after oh. people with that birthday. Yeah, because the stars were here first. Yeah, but somebody named the stars. They didn't yeah. have a fucking name. Yeah. Well, they huh. did it first. <laughs> you heard it here first. So you heard it here first, guys. Cancer uh, is named after everybody that's a when cancer. When it comes to <laughs> astrology, they all derive from different Latin words, and of course, there was Greek. You know, lots of different Greek aspects in that. But what you know now. It, was, it wasn't pronounced or spelled that way then. Yeah, but wouldn't it be fucked up now if I smoked a lot of cigarettes and I ended up getting Aquarius? Like lung Aquarius? Shut instead of fu- lung cancer? You know what? Okay, fuck Or like me, lung Gemini. <laughs> <laughs> well. What if they would have picked any other thing? Oh, I got. I don't know. Troll ass bites is over. We're going back to Astro Bites. <laughs> I don't like this story anymore. Fuck you. My mom died of terminal Gemini. Uh, uh, Late stage Libra. Oh, God. Mm-mm. You just, do know what the astrology names are named after, right? Yep, butthole servers. Different Greek gods. Mm. You're going to pull the mic off. Uh, Stop hanging on the mic. Uh, what is okay. even happening right now? All right. All right. Leos, the entire week will be relatively normal for you with no major situations or events. Your financial position will improve. Virgos, unwind this week and spend time with all the people you love. Spending time with them will help you relax and unwind. Libras, be cautious as there is a possibility 
of unintentionally hurting the feelings of someone who cares for you. Take care of your personal health. <laughs> Scorpios! Your friends will be cheerful and extremely helpful this week, making it a productive time if you need favors or assistance. Your love life or relationship will improve during this period. <laughs> Sagittarius, your communication skills will be at an all-time high, enabling you to effectively convey your ideas and intentions. Through hard work and dedication, you will achieve the desired results. Capricorns, this week there are fortunate opportunities for establishing contacts abroad and increasing your earnings. It is important to act carefully and shrewdly to make the most of these chances. Aquarius, this is a positive period for many matters as there will be a rapid inflow of funds from both your own and external sources. Your efforts will lead to a significant increase in income. Pisces, this week you will adopt a light-hearted and easy-going attitude. There will be significant progress in your work as a result of your consistent efforts. Efforts. That <laughs> is your fucking horoscopes for the week. Now, um, I guess you should probably listen to the rest of this shit if you've made it this far. If you've made it this far. <laughs> Hooray. <laughs> yeah, no, it's kind of been a little crazy. Oh, it's been a crazy ride with you, you know, but... You just gotta, you know, stick it in sometimes and just oh, hope for the best. Carrie's Astro Bikes. I hope you enjoyed everything. We'll see you. Oh, yeah. We'll see you next week on Carrie's Astro Bites. All right, Barbie. Ah! Stay rotten. And now it's another movie review brought to you by Rotten Reviews. Rotten Reviews. Movies. Movies? Yeah, what they say. Let's talk some shit. It's time for another movie review. Oh my god! I'm scared. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, this a uh, little bit is something we've been doing for the past couple weeks. So we are doing another uh, movie review. Movie review. And we reached way back into the vault for a movie that they uh, both Grim nor Carrie have seen yet. And that is Natural Born Killers. One of Oliver Stone's, to me, best movies ever. Uh, ev I love everything about this movie. It is chaos incarnate. It has great rhythm. It has a flow that is just chaos and it. It sells the shit out of what the message of that movie is. <laughs> it is definitely the epitome of a manic 90s trip movie. If you look at, like, what Fight Club is, and Fight Club's about, you know, don't be a corporate this and this and that, but then they made all these commercials for Fight Club and made it this big commercial product. So it's funny. This movie is exactly the same way. Like, the idea of how grossly fucked up it is to glorify murder but then also it grossly glorifies the <laughs> nature of murder and makes it look all so fucking cool <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't think it made it it wasn't about making it look cool what Matt said is right but it was just such a strange way to explore the minds of two serial killers like yeah. that I loved it so it was. much like it's it was like almost like a slight different take on like a Bonnie and Clyde type thing. Yeah, like if Bonnie and Clyde were way worse than Bonnie and Clyde were. And cooler, yeah. but yes. Yeah, and Clyde was a lot less of a uh, short nothing. Like. I loved how the different film types were like pieced together. Yeah, they it used was. so many different kind of cameras and editing techniques. Uh, and they shot this movie on the road for the most part. Uh, taking lots of drugs. They actually I did. I think they said it was 62 days they spent and shot this whole movie. 62 or 68, I'm not, I'm you know, not something sure. Something. Yeah. yeah, so the way they filmed this movie, the everybody on set, it's like they pitched together, they all stuck together to create such a manic set 
for everybody to keep everybody on their toes, I think, and just keep them in that headspace. And a lot of them on the any of the behind the scenes, you hear them talking about Oliver Stone just being this kind of like wild, manic, but, you know, fully followable like leader type Mm -hmm. and it just it's cool to see the dichotomy of the all the characters working together on seeing a project get done and them just like literally putting three months of their life into making that project having live rattlesnakes and actual like what was it like death row inmates almost yes yeah like on the way down to trying out the mushrooms before they filmed the mushroom scenes what the fuck this is a masterpiece yes Yes, Nat MBK is a masterpiece. I want to say thank you, Matt, for showing us this movie. Indeed. Like, and so I love let's, Woody Harrelson and a lot of the other stuff he's in. So hell yeah. It's nice to see so him. So let's go this. a little mm-hmm. round the room and, and give a little brief, uh, un, like, what we thought of it and, and sort of what we rate it, and then we'll go back through everything. So to me, of course, this is a quintessence. This is one of those movies you had to have watched. If you have not watched this movie, you have to watch this movie. Uh, Woody Harrelson puts on it's the first time he ever broke and made his character this guy this was what changed Woody Harrelson's action why he ends up playing like carnage in the future and stuff because Oliver Stone was just like I see anger in you and it worked he sold that character like a beast Juliet Lewis did a great job Michael Madsen did a great job I mean Everybody in this was just masterful. Robert Downey Jr., Tommy Lee Jones, everybody in this. Everything about this movie is well put together, and I literally, I, 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 I guess a solid nine. Like it's really hard to get a ten with me. This is definitely a nine movie for me, and a definitely must watch. I've seen this movie multiple times. It does not lose its fun edge. Yeah, I'd have to give this movie a ten out of ten, just because of the fact that. It literally grabs you at the beginning and keeps you there the whole time. There's always something happening. Like like I said, with the different camera types or yeah. film styles throughout the thing. And how Where they they're going from like it. 35 millimeter to actual mm-hmm. film to actual like digital. Yep. And how they pieced all that together to kind of make it different. Uh, there was another thing about them using these giant screens because some of the shot was shot on a stage, mm-hmm. and they would just set these giant screens out and project the roads going past, and then yes. they would just have them do whatever in the car to make it look like they're moving forward in time. And then synchronize it. it cool and shit. all those all those screens were used in the. Uh, uh, I think it was closer one of the it was whatever nine inch nail song had just come out i think it was closer and how f- it made me so happy to hear the nine inch nails music playing in the background of this movie and it fits so fucking well dude i love nine inch nails <laughs> yes, yes, yes. no it was burn the video for burn sometimes mm-hmm. i think i could burn oh yes. that movie that song had just come out and rob zombie had just put out like maybe Dragula, and those screens were used in those videos and for that movie. I think that's the songs I want to say, but Burn is definitely the Nell song, because Burn premiered with Nell's coming out. There absolutely was not a dull moment in this film. I, I It held our attention, just like Carrie said. Yeah, and, 10 um, out of 10. Absolutely. And um, having two victims of like childhood abuse grow up to be with each other and continue on their their pain and their agony and just taking it out on people in a different way. It's so strange to really delve in and see all of that transpire. Well, not like, to mention how they manipulate each other with that same oh, yeah. kind of like violent and it's like they know it's like they know that and they're okay yeah, with it. And they're okay they're with just it. doing they're, yeah. just, they're in it together and I love that. I fucking love it. How oh my God. I give this a ten out of ten as well. This is really good. And I've never given a 10 out of 10. I love this movie so fucking much. I love that it does these things where it's almost like, hey, we're a completely different movie now. Like, it starts into the mm-hmm. sort of Mallory sitcom, you know, with Rodney Dangerfield playing, like, the scuzziest character he has ever played in his career. And he has played some scuzzy-ass characters. I don't think anybody else could have portrayed any of these roles any better. Yeah, agreed. They did great on the casting. Mm-hmm. And, of course, you know, it, it, you start off with your regular story. 
of a uh, guy, uh, you know, there's a girl that's being abused by her family. They're a mm-hmm. poor family. He's a shitty ass dad. In uh, such a comedic way, too. In such a very comedic way. They had a fucking laugh track over, uh-huh. like, in, 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 like implied uh, sexual assault. Yeah. Uh, and then Mickey comes in and meets her and... You know, he steals her away and they steal his car and he ends up getting arrested and he's in jail for, I think it was like six months to a year for Grand Theft Auto. And she's visiting him and then there's one day where she's visiting him while she's, you know, doing all that stuff. And she's she's like giving him a giving hand, him a hand job and they're just like <laughs> expositioning the movie. Mm-hmm. And then after she's like, I can't take it anymore, Mickey. He, he won't keeps, stop touching me. He's fucking touching me, Mickey. He keeps he fucking touching keeps me. laughing at me. Oh, the guy that played the dad, what's his Rodney name? Rodney Dangerfield. Okay, he didn't know in that scene that he was going to be portraying um, someone molesting their daughter. He he didn't know in that scene. That's hilarious. <laughs> Until like as they were filming that one scene, and he was just he didn't know how to take it. That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> Damn. Like, that is a way to do an art <coughs> piece. I, I, holy fuck. I mean, and he, he killed it, dude. He did. Um, and then, you know, uh, he gets out of prison because apparently he steals a horse when a tornado is coming and rides it into the eye of the tornado to oh, escape Yes, prison. I think uh, during his prison time, that was part of their community service in a way or something. Yeah, they were doing horse breaking. Yeah. Or wrangling or whatever Something, I guess people for do ranchers. with horses. Yeah. <laughs> so he gets free, goes back to her house, and they brutally murder his mother and father, and they let her brother go free. And she's it like, you're her, free her now, mother, Kevin. Father. Yeah. It was her mother and father, That's what it? I mean. Yeah, okay. It's that he brutally killed their family. And, yep. uh, yeah, they escape, and they hit the road. Never see the little brother again. He just had his one yep. little cameo. Never yep. again. <laughs> So what? One of the things that I think is interesting is like going back and watching this movie again. Uh, when you get through some of the murder parts and they've finally been arrested and they start going into the Wayne Gale, Robert Downey Jr. stuff, he's like, "It's been three weeks, and this is like the equivalency of like eight years worth of like murders yeah. <laughs> in like, three how was fucking it that like weeks." A lot. Because they kill these people in the diner. They kill these people mm-hmm. over here. They fought, you know, they, it's and just like, death, death, takes, death, 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 It takes a really big turn in the movie when they kill uh, the indigenous man. Yes, because they end up running out of gas, and they uh, find an indigenous man that's in a hut. He takes mm-hmm. them in. They kind of, they're still m- tripping on mushrooms. And he has a pet rattlesnake. And, oh, there is a live rattlesnake. I can't get over that. Live rattlesnakes on set. Yep. Not all of them were. Some of them were fake, but they were fucking live rattlesnakes. Yeah. And, and so... Like, he With tells and this, everything. He Dedication. tells the classic story of the snake and the woman. Uh, you know, the woman finds a, a hurt rattlesnake, brings it in, nurses it back to health. One day the snake bites her, and while she's sitting there dying, she's like, you know, why'd you bite me? And he's like, I'm a fucking snake, bitch. It's, it's what I do. Yep. Uh, and, and it's just, it's a really good point to the story, because then he's, they, Mickey freaks out and fucking kills the Indian, and all hell breaks loose. They end up getting mm-hmm. bit by rattlesnakes, and they're trying to get some snake antivenom. bite juice. Antivenom. And uh, the cops end up finding them because the clerk tips them off, and then they get arrested, and they go into prison, and they start talking about how they, I think they said they killed like 56 fucking people in three weeks. I think so. Like, yeah. just all the way down to like running from the cops and shooting a dude on like a bicycle that's just on the side of the road with a shotgun, and and, Mick, and Mallory going like, I always wondered what it'd be like to shoot one of them. <laughs> like, it's so stupid. <laughs> She's like, it's harder when they're driving a bike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then they go to like the mania and how the mainstream is like hyping them up as these like superheroes and everybody's got Mickey and Mallory fever mm-hmm. and they just, you know, go on and on and on. And then you move into like the part of the movie that to me is like some of the most amazing shit is when they end up going to the prison. Yes. And they, this is shot in a real prison. Perfectly. With real uh-huh. prisoners that are doing uh, yeah. back-to-back life sentences and have nothing to lose. And they are using these people in the middle of scenes of a riot and shit. 
Yes. It is and, okay. phenomenal. So they were scared during the making of this and only gave the prisoners rubber weapons. Yeah, that's <laughs> not surprising. You can see some of the behind-the-scenes behind footage have when the inmates are, like, crowding up and, and ganging up into a corner on each other. They had to, like, yell cut and then come in with, like, horns because they get so riled up and shit. Like, that is, like, that, okay, that the, is guerrilla cinematography, man. It is. That is, how, that is the wild way to make a movie. The prison scenes were shot in Illinois at the State uh, State Field Correctional Center. So, yeah. It was an actual prison. So fucking wild. They were paid $50 a day. There uh, is an alternate ending to this movie. I suggest you check it out because it doesn't... It takes away that kind of clean bow that they put on the end of this movie. And I think it, it makes a really good point uh, about the lineage and and the idea of becoming a legacy and all that shit uh because in the original uh in the first in the ending that you'll see mickey and mallory just leave that's it in the original ending that they cut they literally got killed uh by the serial killer that they helped uh escape and the prison it was such a good scene too and it was just she like was it, stabbed it's kind of death with a pencil yeah it's just no 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 that's in the that's in the courtroom this scene oh, that, is that when they're the in the van and the serial oh, killer's yeah. like, I want to fuck your wife. And I he's like, don't talk like out. that. Yeah. And then uh -huh. he's like, yeah, fuck you guys. And he just shoots them and they're just dead. And he's not even a character in the movie for he fucking just two gets minutes. Out of the car, walks out, and that's but that's then. like the beauty of what they're making a statement with Mickey and Mallory is like, if you just happen to run into Mickey and Mallory, you could it's know fucked. him for one minute and you're dead. That's just the end of it. And all of those people they killed had a story just like Mickey and Mallory up to the point of them getting killed and just how like senseless and pointless the whole thing was. And I think that that kind of a bleak ending may have doomed the fame that this movie got, but I think it adds more of the like how pointless as fuck it is to doing what happened to the whole movie. Yeah, that's true. I agree. So, um... There was a Coca-Cola ad with the polar bears yeah. in this movie. So Coca-Cola didn't know that they were going to be using their ad in that way. And they were furious when they ah, found out about it. Hilarious. I know. So fucking that funny fucking to me. That is fucking hilarious. <laughs> they were pissed the hell off, but they couldn't do anything about it. They already signed. In the behind the scenes footage, uh, every time they're interviewing Robert Downey Jr. Now, this was back when Robert Downey Jr. was still hitting the sauce. Like, he's just sitting there fiddling with a spoon the whole time fucking time he's got a spoon <laughs> yeah. in his hand he's just twirling it oh uh juliette lewis actually broke uh broke tom seismore's am i saying sizemore. sizemore's nose when she slammed his face against the wall yeah they uh he was talking about that when they were like hey she's asleep maybe we should refilm it later and Oliver Storm was like, no, 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 she's not asleep. And he went and he was like, oh, shit, she's asleep. They woke her up and they were like, hey, we got to film this scene right now. And then he broke her, she broke his nose. And he was like, dude, I think I might, people on the set were like, he might need stitches. And, he, and Oliver Stone was like, no, 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 no. Juliet Lewis is awake. Mm -hmm. We need to film this scene. Then you get stitches afterwards. Yes, <laughs> yes. I think I think it was Oliver Stone was the one that was playing music in between takes. Yeah, in between takes, he would play like kind of like crazy Indian uh -huh. music and shit to keep that manic tone high. Make it, everybody. It, it on was edge. so wild. Like Oliver Stone directs very, uh, you know, like um, oh gosh, what is the name of it? Um, like method that he wants to create a situation in order to produce a, a reaction from his actors to get that action out of them. So, I think Rodney Dangerfield didn't have a script. Everything he was saying at playing the father was just all off made up of off head. the top That's of his awesome. head. They didn't give him a script. That's Oliver Stone didn't awesome. want to give him a script. That's fucking insane. Holy shit. But, like, if you dive into this movie, like, there's just so many things that were so synchronicity and so perfect like this is a this is an opus to movies for me if you have not seen natural born killers go watch it right it's now phenomenal they shot this in 56 days 56 days but editing took another 11 months and they finished the film it uh, when they finished the film it took about 3000 cuts 
which is almost four times as many as the average. Holy fuck. So they recut it, watched it again, recut yeah. it. <laughs> Jesus. So, and of course, you know, the film was banned in several countries, uh, including Ireland. Oh, fun. Yep. So, yeah. Anything else y'all want to say about NBK? Like I said, phenomenal. Love it, love it, love it. Go watch it. This is a dark 90s acid trip of serial killers, and you need to watch this and have your mind blown. Yeah. Yes. Just, you know, be, uh, don't get drawn in. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't. There's a reason why they had banned it. It was uh, so many things going on. What What the hell was all of this shit going on? I can't. I don't know. There was a whole bunch of shit going, but that never fails. It was fails. very, very controversial. It never fails that whenever any movie comes out that's really like big, they're going to draw like a line to other stories in the media. The problem is, is that those stories exist in the media every single week. Oh, because a woman named Sarah Edmondson and her boyfriend dropped acid and went on a shooting spree. That was just one of like 50 different things that was happening <laughs> that they were blaming this movie for, inciting these type of riots. Wow. So, yeah, MBK, Oliver Stone, great fucking movie, great fucking actors, great editing. This is like the editing of this movie oh, really, damn. really makes this movie. So. <laughs> it yes. did. But, yeah, guys, anything else you want to say? I yep. fucking loved it. I can look up more facts if you want me to. No, nah, we can go on past All this. All right, then let's move past it, Matt. Well, I mean, if you yeah, want to continue Matt. your facts, Fuck don't you, ask Matt. for my permission. Yeah, Fuck Matt. you, Matt. You don't have to ask for my Fuck permission. You, it's okay. You Matt can make these choices sucks. on your own. You really, own. really suck. You suck. You suck. You Fuck suck. You suck. All right, guys, so we will be right back. Not you. With Grimm's Poetry Shorts. Matt. Stay rotten, guys. Stay rotten. Stay rotten. And get your little pig ass over here. Get your wee 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 wee. wee. <laughs> hey, listeners, wanna choke me? <laughs> God damn it, Grim. That's not the lines we talked about. Ah, oh, hey, listeners, wanna actually learn something here? We'll get a load of Grim's poetry shorts. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Grim's poetry shorts. I have found probably my top favorite poet as of yet. So jumping right into it, this is After Images by Audre Lorde. However the image enters, it force remains within. My eyes, rock-strewn caves where dragonfish evolve. Wild for life, relentless and acquisitive. Acquisitive. <laughs> Learning to survive where there is no food. My eyes are always hungry and remembering. However the image enters, its force remains. A white woman stands bereft and empty. A black boy hacked into murderous lesson. Recalled me in forever. Like a lurch of earth on the top edge of sleep. Etched into my vision. Food for dragonfish that learn. To live upon whatever they must eat. Fused images beneath my pain. That, to me, reading it, I could never do it justice enough, ever. So, in this poem, After Images, Lord describes her ability to vividly recall the tragic lynching of Emmett Till almost 24, 24 years after it happened. This was something that was blown up everywhere once it happened. People were rioting. There was so much happening for the injustice of this boy. And holy fuck, I didn't learn about it until today. And I'm fucking sad. I'm devastated. <sighs> it's This dredges up so much terribleness and negativity that it's like there needs to be a rightful place, a rightful... Everyone needs to know about this shit. I, I hate to say this, but this definitely dredges up the reason why people should think about what we're teaching in school because we when i was in school we definitely learned about emmett till definitely without a shadow of a doubt it I, was a big fucking deal i can't remember anything like that being taught where i went to school what oh was there a bug on me yeah okay sorry guys i had a little baby bug on my face and uh so when they were teaching you about that in school, was it like how how were they portraying it as? 
very bad. <laughs> like what happened was horrible. Okay, so they were bringing this to light yes. among people who didn't know about it. Yes, okay. 100%. This was during like, you know, uh, probably history and probably sociology. And uh, they definitely were not taking the side of uh, the White oppressors. White women. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, in this poem, Lord uses graphic imagery, imagery to illustrate the details in such a way that the reader cannot unsee it. Lord's poem shows the reader the prevalence of racism and inequality during the early 20th century. The poet describes the brutal murder of Emmett Till, an African-American boy, for whistling at a white woman, simply whistling at her, which I don't think even fucking happened. This directly reflects how many white people, fe- how white people at this time felt towards African Americans and uh, all throughout Lord's life. And this is still continuously happening. And uh, she mentions that the location of her poem, that all this happened in Jackson, Mississippi. So Emmett Lewis Till was an African American boy who was abducted, tortured, and lynched in Mississippi in 1955 at the age of 14 after being accused of offending a white woman, Carolyn Bryant, in her family's grocery store. So Carolyn Bryant was a lying bastard, just so you guys know. She was fucking a, lying. I think a bitch. I think bastard is gender specific. She can be anything, okay, really, that's anything fair. terrible. You know what? Fuck. Put your mind to it, and you can be a bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody can be a bastard. <laughs> Just don't be like her. She's the worst kind of bastard there is. Fuck that bitch. Uh, rest in hell, bitch. But don't even rest. <laughs> that's great. Good. So Audrey Lord, um, she was a gay American poet and a feminist icon who described herself as black lesbian, mother, warrior, and poet. She was one of the writers whose writing didn't only revolve around her identity as a gay woman, but instead she also did a lot of writing on feminist theory, racism, classism, civil rights advocacy, among other things, like many other fucking things. And she became more confident and inspired to write more lesbian poems later on in her career. Like the more she learned, the more she was like, oh, this shit needs to go everywhere. Yeah, that poem was really fucking good. It was, and uh, I wish I read it better. <laughs> I was just like, Ugh, I'm reading about somebody new. <laughs> I love her now. She was born February 18th, 1934 in New York City. And holy shit, this was during the Depression, wasn't it? In the 30s, yeah. Yeah. That what? Yes, yes, it was. I did. I need to explore that more. I want to know more about that. I suck at history. I'm just throwing it out there. I'd have to do well, some study yeah. into a. But 1934, with this she was pretty much growing up during the depression, and all of that that was taking place after yeah. the after effects and you know all that bullshit. But she was the youngest of three daughters and was nearsighted to the point of legal blindness. So that's considered a disability. Uh, yeah, yeah. She overcame a lot of shit. Uh, Lord graduated from Hunter College with a bachelor's degree, later earning a master's degree in library science from Columbia University. Fuck yes. Her poetry embodied themes of emotions including love, fear, racial and sexual oppression, survival, and urban struggle. She was a prolific writer who explored the feelings and suffering of marginalized groups. She also focused on her experiences as a woman, a lesbian, an African American, and a mother. Her poetry reflected all of these experiences as well as events unfolding over time. And uh, it described the necessity for social action against racism and sexism. Holy fuck, she was focused on so many things in history. Yeah. Like trying her best as a person, as one single person to right the wrong. Yeah, basically also overcoming like massive amounts of adversity. Whereas you had like uh-huh. Edgar Allan Poe was like, this is such an inconvenience. I'll I'm going to go at cry it. at this yeah. grave. But, you know, she was just like, nothing's going to stop me. She was a fucking powerful woman. Um, in 1968, Lord was awarded the grant from the National Endowment of the Arts. In the spring of the same year, she became a poet in residence at, uh, hopefully I say this right, Tougaloo College. 
a historically black institution in Mississippi. It was at Tougaloo that she met her companion, Frances Clayton. Audre Lorde died November 17, 1992. That was the year I was born. In St. Croix, Croix, I'm not sure how to spell how to say this, uh, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and it was of liver cancer, and she was 58 years old. Um, she was asked a question by one of the people interviewing her at one point, and they asked her what she regret most during her lifetime. And this was uh, her answer in some way, whatever. In becoming forcibly and essentially aware of my mortality and of what I wished and wanted for my people and for my life, however short my life might be, priorities and omissions became strongly etched in a merciless sight. And what I most regretted were my silences. Hell yeah. Holy fuck. Yep. That's um, awesome. While she was still alive, of course, and not before she died, she worked as a librarian in New York public schools. And in 1962, she married a man named Ed, uh, Edwin Rollins. I think Rollins, Rollins. He was a white gay man, and they had two children, Elizabeth and Jonathan. And in 1972, Lord met her longtime partner, Frances Clayton, who uh, also began teaching as a poet in residence in Tougaloo College. Tougaloo. To right. talk to, I, you know what? I'm saying Tougaloo. That's, let, let that's all I can Let me see and do. see how I would pronounce it. Let's right see. There. Tog, to, to, galu. Togalu. Togalu. To. I'm saying Togalu. <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping it's that. <laughs> no shit. But oh, that, um, that one's. Uh, and she had a great many quotes throughout her lifetime that I find very beautiful. And here are some of these. So Audrey Lord's quotes are, "Your silence will not protect you." I am not free while any woman is unfree, even when her shackles are very different from my own. I have come to believe over and over again that what is most important to me must be spoken, made verbal, and shared, even at the risk of having it bruised or misunderstood. Tougaloo, Mississippi. I'm saying it right. You it is Tougaloo. It, right. it is Tougaloo. I'm so happy. <laughs> I probably said everything else wrong, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, where was I? Revolution is not a one-time event. Pain is important, how we evade it, how we succumb to it, how we deal with it, how we transcend it. Our feelings are our most genuine paths to knowledge. Without community, there is no liberation. Nothing I accept about myself can be used against me to or diminish me. That's great. Yeah, I fucking fell in love with that one. We have been raised to fear the yes within ourselves, our deepest cravings. And then this one. This one rattles me the most. So, black and third world people are expected to educate white people as to our humanity. Women are expected to educate men. Lesbians and gay men are expected to educate heterosexual world. The oppressors maintain their positions and evade their responsibility for their own actions. There is a constant drain of energy which might be better used in redefining ourselves and devising realistic scenarios for altering the present and constructing the future. That That's one. That's badass. Oh, yes. Yeah. I had no to say shit. this one on the podcast like that one made me That's, so happy. I'm like, yes! Pretty fucking genius that, you know, it's like, yeah, all the work is on the person like trying to be accepted while the people that are oppressing them are like... No, no, no. This is this is a thing that you have to do. You have to plead yes. your case to me just for me to accept that you're human. Heaven forbid we accept that they're human because uh, scientifically they're human. And I know a lot of people love to argue the science of what is this or what is that. But if the science is simply that we're all human then we should all be fucking treated equally no matter what we decide beyond the fact that we are fucking all human. And all that I could find, I didn't find anything shitty about her character whatso fucking ever. I am so glad because normally I'm like dumbfounded with all the fucking garbage that I have to suffer through to find some good qualities about somebody. So what is the name of the uh, uh, poet again? Her name is Audre Lorde. 
Audrey Lord, and she dropped the Y from her name because she liked how uh, the spelling and the font looked without the Y, because it looked better to her, so she dropped the Y. That's awesome. Yeah, you guys look them up because uh, th their poetry is phenomenal. Yes, very strong. She is a strong woman. She is black, and she is a lesbian, and she had so much to say about everything she went through and learned throughout her life. Like, holy fucking shit, there's so much you can take in from her. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm glad I found her. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm glad you found somebody that not disappointing. <laughs> yeah. A, it seems to be a little bit of a drudge. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, it is funny to find the ones that are just, like, really shitty, but at the same time, it's such a relief to find her. Hell yeah. That's awesome. Yes. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm glad you introduced me to her as well, and I hope... That the listeners have a good time learning about her, and you guys go go look her up, man. It's awesome. Yes. Well, everyone, stay rotten and look her up. Yeah, and uh, we will see you next week uh, for the next Rotten Mornings. Uh, I don't think we really have anything to project coming up to say, hey, look out for this. But as always, we are working. I've got like five fucking things to do now. So stay rotten, everyone. Stay rotten, everybody. <laughs>